Hello, my name is Jill Phillips, and I'm a co-owner of Squeals on Wheels, a traveling petting zoo and pony rides. My name is John Phillips. We have horses, miniature horses. We have miniature llamas and alpacas. Chickens, ducks. We have bearded dragons. Our website is www.squealsonwheels.us. Leopard gecko's tails are very interesting. They, like other lizards, lose their tails, particularly as a defensive mechanism and also because of stress and disease and some other causes. The leopard's tail is constructed where it has actual soft tissue areas where a predator that is chasing a gecko that catches it by its tail, that soft tissue area will separate and it's a natural caused issue with the geckos. The, uh, the tail can actually drop off without the, the predator biting it, and it will wiggle, and the predator will spend some time looking at its tail while the leopard can get away. There's a, the soft tissue area also constricts its blood vessels immediately upon the release of the tail, and it doesn't cause any problems with excessive blood loss. The tail, after its loss, uh, will grow back. It'll, little, it'll look a bit different, but it's, uh, it's going to be replaced by another tail. When a leopard gecko's tail does drop off, you have to have a, a couple of considerations. You need to keep uh, a clean area in its cage so it doesn't get infections. It's better to have a um, covering of newspapers over the bottom of the cage that can absorb any droppings or any of the uh, liquids that comes out of the gecko and you must keep other geckos away from them because other geckos tend to bully or pick on the gecko. I uh, also need to watch when, when feeding crickets. The crickets will actually go after the gecko if they're left in there for a long time. So take any excess crickets after about four or five minutes of eating with a gecko, take them out and feed them again later.